Um, I would say that shadow play is about uh, love, sexuality, creativity and disobedience, unconventionality. It's about a group of characters who choose to live outside uh, the set rules of society. And it takes as its starting point um, the real life uh, remarkable story of the very ardent, uh, intense friendship between the author Bram Stoker, uh, the author of Dracula, um, the great Shakespearean actor Henry Irving, and uh, the brilliant actress Ellen Terry. And I, I suppose it focuses on a, a period of eight or ten years in, in the lives of these three really remarkable artists and the very particular love that they had for each other. Bram Stoker was uh, born in Dublin. He uh, had a painful, difficult childhood. He had a strange illness which meant that he couldn't walk until he was seven or eight. He never attended school, so he was quite a lonely kid. Um, he grew up entranced by the theatre and uh, wanted to, to write plays and novels. As a young man, he moved to London to be the personal assistant of Henry Irving at the Lyceum Theatre. And that's what Stoker did for most of his life. He published eight or ten books, and none of which were successful in his lifetime. And he, he was really known to the public to the extent that he was known at all at that time as, as Henry Irving's right-hand man. One, one of the really wonderful things about Bram Stoker as an Irish-born novelist um, to me is that he wasn't interested uh, in Ireland at all. Um, you look at Stoker in late 19th century Dublin, which is a remarkable uh, decade for cultural reawareness, cultural renaissance. You have Yeats and Singh and Lady Gregory and all of that wonderful Dublin-based Protestant intelligentsia refinding the stories that have been lost with the famine and rediscovering on Gaelga the Irish language and saving that very, very old tradition of storytelling, all of which would, would, have, would have gone, would have been wiped away by the famine and death and emigration. And it was a wonderful nation-building project. At the same time, the fact that Stoker didn't want to do that, I, I find just a really intriguing heartwarming thing about him, that in the middle of this great national project there was a writer whose wish was to go to London, where he felt equally at home, and to be in showbiz, and to write plays, and to give people an experience of a different kind of beauty. I think he must have had to be very strong to resist the temptation of nationalism and to say and to infuse his art with the notion that stories belong to all of us. So, so his, his outsiderdom and his living on the border of, of that sort of cultural nationalist project uh, and, and to some extent him being a Dublin-born man who was a great Londoner, he lived most of his life in England, I, I find that um, a rather lovable thing about him. I think a writer should write about what they want, what they feel they're good at. I shouldn't really have rules. I mean, the writers that I love, um, Peter Carey, Toni Morrison, the late Irish writer Brian Moore, um, they have a kind of openness to the world of story, so that some novels are set in the past, some might be set now, so, some might be set in the future but that it's all rooted in a desire for empathy with the reader. It's all rooted in the desire to give the reader something that is going to embody that strange paradox of, of fiction. So, you know, I've, I've written about the 19th century before. I could imagine writing something about the 22nd century or, you know, the Stone Age, if, if, it, if it came to that. So there's a certain kind of 19th century novel that I'm... Um, impatient with as a reader, where, where you know, the, the novelist has done a lot of research and um, 
you're just ambling along fine with the story, you get to page 40 and suddenly everything stops and there's a kind of a PowerPoint presentation on um, dentistry in late Victorian England, usually a pretty horrible um, experience, or the kind of shoes people wore uh, in, 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 in 19th century France. And, and of course the reason is that the author has come across a really fascinating article um, while doing his or her research in the National Library. So, so that notion um, is, an, is something that I, that I try to be careful of. But if I come across a story from any era that I think could say something to a reader now, then I, I usually try and cup my hands around that flame and not let it go out.